Okay, the final question, which machine works best for the abs? Um, that is the million dollar question. That's the one that everybody wants to know about. You know, it's probably the most commonly asked question. It's the one that shows up on tons of blogs and forums for fitness. Um, everybody wants to get that six pack or, or to tone up their stomach because that's probably the area that they start to put on the weight the first. Uh, and it's usually the hardest place for it to come off. Uh, and the reason being is that you lose fat systematically. Okay, wherever you put it on first, is the last place you're going to take it off. And I'm sorry to be the, the bearer of bad news, but that's the truth. You need to think about increasing lean tissue on your whole body. Okay, so if you think of a sponge, I like to use the analogy of a sponge. If you have a puddle on the ground and you have a sponge that's this big and then a sponge that's this big, which sponge would you rather throw into the puddle to try to soak up that water? And obviously you're going to want to throw in the bigger sponge. Okay, that bigger sponge, if you want to think about lean muscle tissue on your body, Think about increasing the size of the sponge so that you can soak in more fat and increase your metabolism. It's kind of a rough analogy, but it, I think it works for people to get you focused on training your whole body um, to lose fat in the abdominal region. Okay? Also, your diet and cardio is going to play a huge role in trying to decrease body fat in that area. Um, but the question was, what machines work best for abs? For me, uh, I actually don't, I haven't trained on a machine in years, so um, I, I can show you definitely a few um, exercises that we do in our boot camps, that we do in group personal training, um, and that we work with our athletes. There are three different types of things that you can do for your abdominals. You can work on stability, you can work on flexion, which is your traditional crunching type movement, or you can work on rotation. And we're going to go through um, some sets of, of what you can do there. As I mentioned before, there are three ways to train the abs. The first being stability, the second being flexion and crunching, and then the third being rotation. First, we're going to focus on stability. Okay, being able to stabilize through your torso uh, is a great way to train to prevent injury, and it's also a great way to tone up your abdominal area as well. Uh, it's training it a little bit more functionally in the way that the abs are supposed to move. Okay, which really is that they're not supposed to move. Okay, too many times I see people in the gym cranking away on their, their crunches and doing a ton of rotation. They don't train stability where that's really what the abs are made to do. They're not. They're made to keep you upright. They're made to resist extension. They're made to resist rotation, rotary force um, when in sports and, and in day-to-day -day movement. Um, they're also there to be stable so that you can transfer energy from your upper to your lower body. It's kind of the link between your legs and your, and your arms. Uh, so if that area is not strong and stable, you're not going to be able to efficiently move around in life. Uh, the first exercise we do for stability is a pillar bridge. I'm sure you've seen somebody in the gym do this exercise. Uh, it's simply just getting on your forearms, rotating your thumbs out and getting your feet dug into the ground to push away and hold yourself here for time. Okay, the one thing you want to be careful of is that you keep your head straight with your spine, right? We don't want to be looking up. You want to try to push away from the ground as hard as you can to almost round out your back. And too many times I see people doing these drills, they kind of hang here all day, very passive. I want you to be as active as possible. So you're really pushing away, rotating your thumbs out, tightening your glutes, and tightening your abs. Okay, if you feel that in your lower back when you do that exercise, you probably don't have enough strength to really be in that position. You've got to earn the, the right to, to get in that position first by maybe starting from your knees, right? So you can start keeping a straight line from your shoulder to your hip to your knee, holding this position, keeping your back protected, and then once you gain the strength there, maybe it'll take you a few weeks to come up to your toes where you're going to have a little bit of a longer lever to work with. The other way to do that exercise would be to work on the side pillar bridge. Okay, which is a, more of a lateral stability exercise, where we're going to start with our knees at 90 degrees. You're going to go ahead and lift up. Again, keeping your head straight with your spine. You can go ahead and put your hand on your hip or reach up to the sky and rotate your thumb back. That also helps. Um, this is the simple progression to lengthen the lever. You're just going to stack your feet, lift your hips up, and hold that position here or here. Again, keeping your head straight with your spine, just as if you were standing on the ground. Okay, so those are two really quick stability exercises to work on. If those get, you get bored with those and you feel like they're not really, um, you know, because over time you're going to get stronger with that, you're going to need to do some different things. You can't just stay there for two to three minutes. You're going to be wasting a lot of time. So what we like to do is either you can elevate your feet up a little higher 
Or maybe you go to a stability ball. <clears throat> so you can start with your forearms on the ball. You can lift up and hold this position. Same way you did on the floor, but now you have the instability of the ball where you have to really work to stabilize with your abdominals. Or you could do this on your side. Now this one you definitely want to make sure you're ready for on the regular pillar bridge before you start to do this. But you can stack your feet wide and lift up and hold. Okay, same thing, head straight with your spine, pushing away. You're going to feel that stability in your abs. And these again, you're going to hold just for time. Another way we like to do this is also by changing hand positions and foot positions. You can bring your arm to chest, okay, and pull one arm up to chest in this position here. Go ahead and switch sides. The whole time keeping your hips as still as you can. This is a very, very advanced movement. So typically what you'll see with this is when somebody picks up, they're going to rotate their whole body. Okay, that's what, not what we're looking for. We want to make sure you're able to stay in this position, lift your arms, or another variation would be to lift one leg at a time. Okay, in that position, you're working on <clears throat> not rotating through your hips. Okay, another function of the abs. It's not so much to s rotate you so much, it's really more to resist that rotational force. The last stability exercise to go over would be the physio ball rollout. It's where you take all of those static stability exercises that we just did and, and turn it into something where you are moving, but you're maintaining that stability through your trunk. So it's called the stability ball rollout or physio ball rollout. Um, what people commonly make the mistake with this is that they leave their butt behind them. Okay? You want to try to fall into this as much as you can with your hips. It's almost like I use the analogy of being in a full body cast. Right? If you're in a full body cast, you've got a, your whole body is going to move with you and it's also going to move on the way back because that's another way. They'll come out well and then they bring their butt back to come back. So we want to try to keep a straight line from our knee to our hip to our shoulder. You're going to roll straight out and back. And the key thing here is to make sure you don't have low back pain. Just like I mentioned before with the pillar bridge, if you feel it in your back, you didn't deserve the right to do that exercise. So you want to make sure that you work on the strength and stability to get up to this point. And then it might just be from here to here. You're just going to go out as far as you can without pain. Okay? If you can get all the way out to here without pain, that's great. Go for it. But I think especially if you're just starting out, it's a good idea to just start small and then gradually move yourself out to get more and more distance. Okay, let's move on to flexion exercises. <clears throat> One simple flexion exercise that I like to do is the straight leg crunch. We like to resist it a little bit, although you don't have to. Um, you'll start lying flat on your back, <clears throat> toes pointed straight up to the ceiling. You're going to just bring the medicine ball straight up in the air, and what we want to try to do is almost peel yourself off the floor like a sticker. So you're going to bring your head to your, chi to your chest, and then from there, almost pick up each segment of your spine one at a time. So it's chin to, ch chin to chest, and then each segment is going to lift up and then back down. The reason we have our legs straight instead of this, like a traditional crunch, is sometimes when you get yourself in this position, and I'm sure some of you might can, can kind of vouch for this, is that you start to feel it here in your hips when you do crunches. That means you're overusing your hip flexors, which typically get really, really tight if you sit down a lot of the day. So we want to stay away from overusing those hip flexors. We want to keep them straight so that we can crunch straight up to the ceiling. The other problem people um, have with this one is that they crunch forward. I want you to think about crunching up and lifting that ball to the ceiling. This, a little bit simpler progression from there would be to keep our arms out to the side and just go ahead and reach your fingertips towards our heels. And, and again, you could do that one for reps. Um, another flexion exercise would be the reverse crunch. So those are all of our flexion with the upper body. Then we can work on flexion with the lower body. <laughs> we could cut that and come back. Okay, so flexion with the lower body would be with this physio ball. I'm going to pull the physio ball between my legs and go ahead and squeeze it with my heels. From there, all I want to do is just crunch it towards my head and then back down. One thing you want to be careful with this is that you don't arch your back when it comes to this position. You want to keep what's called neutral spine. So a tiny bit of space here, but not to the point where you're arching your back. So you're just going up safely towards your head and then back out without letting the weight of the ball force you to arch your back. Really careful with that.